The overall goal of this procedure, bronchial thermoplasty, or BT, is a non-drug procedure for severe persistent asthma that delivers thermal energy to the airway wall in a precisely controlled manner to reduce excessive airway smooth muscle. Reducing the amount of airway smooth muscle decreases the ability of the airways to constrict, thereby reducing the frequency of asthma attacks. During bronchial thermoplasty, a small flexible tube is advanced into the airway through a standard flexible bronchoscope placed through the mouth or nose. No incision is required. The Allaire device has an expandable wire electrode array at the tip, and when it is expanded, the forearms of the electrode array come in contact with and fit snugly against the airway wall. The expanded electrode array will then deliver controlled radio frequency energy for about 10 seconds to heat the airway smooth muscle. About one third of the targeted lung areas are treated during a single procedure. A total of three procedures are currently needed for complete treatment. Once the procedure is completed, the device and the bronchoscope are removed. The controlled energy delivered during bronchial thermoplasty creates mild heat within the airway wall that is designed to reduce the amount of airway smooth muscle. By reducing the amount of airway smooth muscle, the procedure reduces the ability of the airway walls to contract and narrow during an asthma attack. Bronchiothermoplasty is a novel procedure-based therapy for severe asthma. A main advantage this technique has over a conventional pharmacologic therapy is that medications must be taken regularly, multiple times daily, sometimes having side effects. Bronchiothermoplasty has been proven to improve asthma control and have long-lasting benefits. The implications of this new procedure are extremely encouraging for those with severe adult asthma. This represents a new non-pharmaceutical therapy for the treatment of severe asthma. A pulmonologist demonstrating exper expertise in bronchoscopy will be able to perform this procedure after the appropriate training. Careful attention to patient selection, effective patient management, and a systematic approach to the procedure allow for best possible outcomes. So thinking about bronchial thermoplasty and the proper patient to refer for treatment, a typical patient would be someone with asthma who would be classified as severe and persistent despite proper controller medications including inhaled corticosteroids and long-acting beta agonists. Symptoms they may suffer from would include cough, shortness of breath, chest tightness, mucus production, despite the use of usual standard pharmacologic measures, including the anti-inflammatories, inhaled corticosteroids, and long-acting beta agonists. Despite having severe and persistent asthma, their clinical status should be stable for approximately two weeks before undergoing bronchothermoplasty, they should have no active respiratory infections and be stable to perform uh, bronchoscopy as per usual hospital procedures. The treatment plan is to administer bronchial thermoplasty in three treatment sessions. Each session treats a specific region of the lung. The first session focuses on one lower lobe. The second session focuses on the second lower lobe. The final session focuses on both upper lobes. Each treatment is scheduled approximately three weeks apart. Bronchial thermoplasty is indicated for the treatment of severe persistent asthma in adults. The patient must be 18 years and older with asthma that is not well controlled using daily inhaled corticosteroids and long-acting beta agonists. Patients should be able to safely undergo bronchoscopy per hospital guidelines. Patients with the following conditions should not be treated with bronchial thermoplasty. Presence of a pacemaker, internal defibrillator, or other implantable electronic device. Known sensitivity to medications required to perform bronchoscopy, including lidocaine, atropine, and benzodiazepines. Patients that have previously been treated with the Allaire system should not be retreated in the same areas. No clinical data are available studying the safety and effectiveness of repeat treatments. Patients should not be treated while the following conditions are present. Active respiratory infection, asthma attack or changing dose of systemic corticosteroids in the past 14 days, known bleeding disorder. 
As with other bronchoscopic procedures, patients should stop taking anticoagulants, antiplatelet agents, aspirin, or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications before the procedure with physician guidance. On the day of the procedure, the bronchoscopist needs to reevaluate the patient and ensure that the patient's asthma status is stable and that they remain a good candidate for bronchial thermoplasty under moderate sedation. The patient should not have any current respiratory tract infections and no severe asthma exacerbations within the last two weeks. Pre-procedure spirometry should be performed and FEV1 values should be within 10% of patient's normal value. Peri-procedure preparation includes prophylactic administration of 50 mg per day of oral corticosteroids for 5 days. These include the 3 days before the procedure, the day of the procedure, and the day after the procedure. Steroids minimize post-procedure inflammation. Additionally, to help dilate the airways, an inhaled bronchodilator such as albuterol can be administered at least 30 minutes prior to the procedure if needed based on pre-procedure spirometry results. In the period immediately following bronchial thermoplasty, typically there is an expected transient increase in the frequency and worsening of respiratory-related symptoms, which are of the type expected following bronchoscopy in patients with asthma. These events typically occur within a day of the procedure and resolved on average within seven days with standard care. In the long term, fewer bronchial thermoplasty-treated patients report adverse respiratory events.